Morning. We're having a baptism today, if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> so uh, we'll begin on page, you've got prayer books today for a reason. We begin on page 299 in the red prayer book. Page 299. <laughs> be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed, blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There, there is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, one God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <laughs> this morning is from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are on edge. As I live, says the Lord, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine and it is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from the righteousness and commit inequity, they shall die for it. For the inequity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from wickedness they, shall, they, they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. 
Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, today's psalm is number twenty-five, found on page six fourteen. We will read verses 1 through 8 in unison. Psalm 25, page 614. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let the God who looks to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and in you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and of my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and he teaches his ways to the lowly. All the paths of Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be it of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not at your own interests, but in the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, <clears throat> but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. And later he changed his mind and went. 
The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. So we've got this parable today of the vineyard owner and his two sons. The father told both the sons to go into the field and work. The first said he wouldn't do it, but then he changed his mind and he actually did go and work. The second said he would, but he never actually made it to the vineyard. So who did the will of the father? It's obvious, the first son. And what draws me into this story is that it's not simply a story about obedience. Jesus could easily have told a story about two sons who were told to go to work, one did and one didn't. But that's not how the story is told. Jesus inserts this one critical element into the story, which is, in fact, the whole point of the story. And that's the relationship between what we say we'll do and what we actually do. Jesus' concern in this teaching is how our actions relate to our intentions. At the end of the day, it's not what we promise, but how we live that makes the difference. And this is a timely passage for us today, and not merely today in the broad sense of the term, these days in which we're living, but in the specific sense of today. Because today, Kirsten and Mickey are bringing Hattie to be baptized. And whenever someone is baptized in the church, it's a time for all of us to renew our baptismal covenant. In fact, when we recorded this service on Wednesday to be broadcast at 10 this morning, we made them reverse the baptismal covenant for Hattie as well. <laughs> this covenant stands at the core of what we believe as Christians in the Episcopal tradition. We're asked a series of questions about our belief. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Christ the Son? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? And then if we've said yes to all these things, we're asked a series of questions that's basically a, well, what you going to do about it, a uh, set of questions. They begin, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? At its heart, it's a question that asks, will you remain active in the life and the faith of the church? And then, will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord? That's a great question. You'll note it doesn't say if you fall into sin, but whenever you fall into sin, because of course you're going to keep sinning as a Christian. So what this part of the covenant is asking is, will you develop a pattern of repentance into your life of faith? It's such a necessary way to live, because it means you're growing in self-awareness, in honesty, and humility because these are the tools we need to be able to repent so that we can keep on growing and being formed and reformed again and again in the image of God's love. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Well, this is actually about evangelism, something that makes Episcopalians shiver. But it is part of our covenant. It's a willingness to share with others what we believe. But unlike so many offensive caricatures of evangelism, it's really not that difficult. This week at the dentist, the hygien hygienist was going on something of a political rant while cleaning my teeth. I kept my mouth shut, figuratively, because I couldn't, her fingers were in my mouth. But even when there were those natural pauses at the dentist, when we're expected to say something, I just kept saying, hmm, interesting. <laughs> But honestly, it's not that I was just avoiding a conflict. I was sincerely listening to her, and I did think it was interesting. I wanted to understand not just the conclusions she'd reached, but where was she coming from, and why? What were her fears, and her yearnings, and her underlying values? And after a while, she recognized that the conversation was a bit one-sided, even for the dentist chair, and she asked, well, what do you think about all this? 
And since part of our monologue had been about the Black Lives Matter protest, I considered it for a moment and said, it makes me sorrowful that so much of the media attention is focused on the violence of the, and the looting, which I don't support at all. Because like 97% of the protests were utterly peaceful. And the overshadowed message of those 97% was that it's really hard to be black in America. You and I are white, I told her. We don't know what it means to be black. And the only way we can know is to listen. Not just to that one example we could find of a black person who says what we want to hear, but what the aggregate message of the black community is. I do believe God loves us all equally, but that God is particularly concerned for those who are struggling. And if we're going to follow God and the heart of God, we have to care about their well-being. In this case, we have to listen to what black Americans are trying to teach us. From my perspective, this is evangelism. I was listening to her with compassion. And when I spoke, it wasn't an attack or a political tirade, but a sincere statement rooted in what I believe to be essentially true about the character of God and my desire to be a part of what God values. Which brings us to the next question of the covenant. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? So this is elemental Christianity, right? Love your neighbor. But at its heart is this extraordinary theological premise that Christ is in all persons. God in Christ is truly present in every person we meet. We got a whole bunch of Christ around us right now. Consider the reverence you show to that tiny little wafer we eat at commun communion. The prayerful approach, the little bow, the careful handling, the embarrassment if you drop it in the chalice, the mindful way that you consume it. If we can do that with a wafer, <laughs> because we believe Christ is somehow mysteriously present in it, how much more so ought we to approach every single person we meet as an icon of Christ, an opportunity to meet God in the flesh? And finally, will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Well, that's a fairly all-encompassing statement, but you know what? <laughs> it's actually easier that way. There's no dithering, there's no evaluation. Are they deserving, are they not deserving? It has nothing to do with our approval of them or their lifestyle or their politics. It is justice for everyone, peace for everyone, respecting the dignity of every human being. That's our goal because that's the heart of God, helping everyone to flourish. And the answer to every one of these questions is, I will, with God's help. Which is with what brings us back to today's parable, where the unmistakable message, I'm sorry to say for our comfort level, is God is not particularly interested in what we say, what answers we give. This liturgical practice we have of reversing the baptismal covenant is of very little value unless we actually do it. Not intend to do it. But do it. So I suppose what I'm saying is this. In light of Patty's baptism, the Nicene Creed in today's liturgy is replaced with the baptismal covenant. You're about to have these questions asked of you afresh. All of you. So think about it before you answer. You might just be better off not answering at all if you don't mean it. You'd at least be giving it the respect of an honest response. But you're not entirely off the hook. If in your silence you could still see the worth in this covenant, the values of the principles embedded in them, then I exhort you still to try to live by them. But you will be doing so not with the shame of a hypocrite, but with the humility of a novice, as one who wants to be more than they believe of themselves at present. But to be clear, the question is not whether we'll live out the covenant lawlessly. There's no question about that we won't. That's why the covenant includes that line, whenever you fall into sin. The question is whether this is the path we will choose for how we will live this life. This one life we're given. This handful of years entrusted to us when we are so dignified to be a part of God's creation. 
And also to be clear, the reason we're sharing the baptismal covenant today is not because it lines up with my sermon, but because we're doing it for Hattie. And even for those who couldn't be back, uh, present at the baptism, we are the church in which she will be raised. We are reaffirming our commitment for Hattie's sake that we will do all within our power to make St. John's the kind of church where this quality of faith is lived out. Hattie is adopted and biracial. Will her experience at St. John's make her feel like she's on the edge of the community or the beloved of the community? If her mom serves on the vestry, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> If Patty is overhearing the conversation between her parents after a vestry meeting, will what she hears be a tale of bickering and wrangling over money and power, or will it be the inadvertent testimony of a church sincerely striving to live out its mission to be like Jesus? When she's five years old and weaving her way amongst us during coffee hour to get a second cookie without her parents noticing, <laughs> will the periphery of her senses see people standing alone with a self-conscious look in their eyes? Or will it be the kind of community where she intuitively knows that nobody is overlooked or undervalued? The culture of her family and the culture of this church will be the principal context that inform her growing soul whether this baptismal covenant, this faith, this God is real or not. Will you who do who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? And please, God, may the answer to this question be not one of words, but one of action. And not for Hattie alone, but for everyone who is a part of our community. Our answers are just as important for Carol and Doug Hughes, retirees who will be welcoming as members of the church at the 10 o'clock service. They're at the opposite end of life spectrum from Patty, but the quality of our shared life is of no less importance to them. For we are all the children of God, equal in dignity and equally called to contribute in forming the reign of God in our midst. Amen. <laughs> The candidate for ba holy baptism will now be presented. I present Patty to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, I will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? And this is for everyone to answer here. Page 302, I'm sorry. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual? I overspoke here. This part is still for the family. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Thank you. Continuing on 303, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We, we will. will. Let us join with she who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. While you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, and the breaking of bread and the prayers, I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Daddy, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of baptism and Mark is Christ of the resurrection. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit. You have bestowed upon this your servants the forgiveness of sins and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, 
a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Just a reminder, um, the, uh, when the time comes to come forward for communion, that's when you have the opportunity to put something into play. I want to say thank you for all the ways in which you continue to support the mission and ministry of our congregation, um, even in this time of pandemic. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come to his books. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, but offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the highest kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith for thanksgiving.
Turning to page 365, let us pray. Please stand. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Oh, thank Love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. 